I've always had a camera with me. Every time of the day and night. Now, I live by the sea now and I like to look at the sea every day. And that's about as far away from the London Underground as you can get. The first serious pictures I shot was in the States in 1969. And they were all shot with a 50mm lens. Well, there he is. He's on the moon. Has he Yet when I look back at those, they have a wide-angle quality. That's one small step for man. Because part, part of the thing about the pictures I shot in the States when I was 21 and I was really just starting was that I always considered them to be shot with an innocent eye. I came up to London, back down to London, to be with my dad, and uh, I had to get a job, and I ended up with this job as a projectionist in a porn cinema in King's Cross. It was an advert I saw in the Evening Standard, 8mm uh, projectionist wanted, and I thought, yeah, this is, <laughs> this is not like working at the Odeon, this is, this is going to be a porn cinema. But it meant that I was then, nearly every day, travelling to and from King's Cross on the tube from Manor House. And uh, I had my camera with me, so I just started to shoot pictures. I began to develop a, fa a real fascination and love for the underground and started to feel, after a few months of this, that it really was mine. That, you know, I was like the party photographer on, in the big underground party that was happening 24 hours a day. I like to photograph the human condition and uh, that's one of the reasons I like photographing on the tube because you can photograph lots of humans in lots of different conditions and that really appealed to me. I, I experienced, you know, like a, a warm glow when I went down there and often it was, you know, it wasn't not just my imagination because that, that whole thing, you go down the stairs, you get that warm wind coming up through the tunnels when a train came in and I loved all that. I think the tube was just about to change, it still had that old fashioned quality and when people look at some of these pictures now you know, they're surprised at the wooden floors. Obviously, they're surprised at the amount of cigarette butts in the wooden floors as well. Because most people who are younger than 30 don't know that you could smoke on the trains. It's a million miles from the sort of image that the tube want to present now. And I think that's why they've never expressed any interest in these pictures. I don't think, I don't think she knew I was doing it was you know also it was so dark she probably didn't even see you know I've got this little black camera that was the other thing with the little black Leica you know you, you you did get the feeling that people didn't register it the train comes in and all the doors stay shut this guy having not been able to get out of the train in any other way is trying to open them and I'm standing there with my camera thinking oh he looks so great he looks like you know the Sort of the undead trying to pull himself out of the grave. You know. The earliest picture in here was shot in the early 70s, 71. The most recent ones were shot the year the book was published, 14, 2014. Yeah, that's 40 years. <laughs> I, I really love this moment because, like, he's gone, you know, he, he's gone, but she's looks a bit kind of slightly reticent and then it was only much later that i noticed the headline on, on the rolled up newspaper which says princess 
and it turns out to be have been about Princess Grace of Monaco being killed in a car crash. He had had his arms up, you know, like adjusting the hands at the back, so they were above his head. But suddenly he put them down for a split second. He put them down just to relax his arms and then they were back up there again. And in that instant, I shot that picture. You know, at, when, when you shoot that, it's kind of, you always, you know, you kind of, it's an equation in your head, isn't it? Oh, look at, you know, the bottle in his pocket, the dog, it's something about the sadness of life. I spent about a year and a half shooting what I suppose were a bunch of teenage kids in at this youth project called the Respond Academy, run by run by a couple of really great people. Uh, and I think the overwhelming feeling that I had about doing it was that it was one of those things that were like uh, you look for a long time for, you know, you travel all over the world for, you look and look and look for all your life and then you find it in your backyard. <laughs>